Hi, my name is Julie Roca. Welcome to our podcast, Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. I've noticed in my years working with seniors that some seniors are well put together and they're happy and they're bright. And I've noticed others that are not put together. Um, Maybe their hair looks like it hasn't been washed in weeks and weeks. Uh, Maybe it's not getting brushed. Maybe um, I've seen women that are walking around with a full facial hair. And so um, I've wanted to bring someone in that we could have a conversation. How does this affect our seniors? And is there anything that we should do about this as our seniors age? Because after all, are they, do they really care? And do they really notice? And what does it matter? So today, I brought my good friend, Laura Safner, who also is the person that does my hair for me. Um, and she comes from Harbor Chase uh, Senior Living community here in Gainesville. And I wanted to talk to her about this because you have background not just in cosmetology and doing hair in a salon, but you have been an educator for many years and have been kind of in that cutting edge cosmetology. So explain a little bit about your background. I've been a cosmetologist for 30 years. Um, Earlier in my career, I did everything from you know, booth rental and uh, uh, managing corporate salons, managing, uh, I did salon supervision as well. But then I was an educator, as you mentioned, for 15 years Mm -hmm. in the public school system, teaching cosmetology uh, and facial specialty, nail specialty to adults and high school students. Okay. And then uh, to really switch things up, (laughs) Mm -hmm. You decided uh, in Career 2.0 to take what you've known over the years and bring it to some of our seniors. And I I love that about you. Uh, That's how I met you. You were working with our seniors. And so I wanted to bring you here specifically to talk about that because I have noticed over the years, um, you know, a lack of, of care and concern for some people, especially if they have dementia and Alzheimer's. And so you and I were talking about it, and um, it's something that you have noticed, too. So talk to me a little bit about it. You you were sharing with me one day, um, what happens if we don't comb our hair after a period of time? Oh, it's horrible. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I have seen seniors, uh, especially... Uh, seniors that are having the memory problems, you know, they're the ones that are not brushing their hair. So what happens is that dry skin just builds up and builds up and builds up. And um, it can make almost like a cradle crap type condition, or it can just be very flaky skin that's accumulated. And when I do brush their hair, when they start coming into the salon, there's just flakes everywhere. And it'll take several weeks of regular salon visits to actually clear up that scalp. Yeah. So I know that a reason why people don't necessarily brush their loved one's hair is because sometimes there's resistance. They don't want to shower. Um, I've heard that sometimes uh, showering can feel like needles on the skin Um, or they don't want to sit still for a brushing. What do you do to kind of get around those things? Well, sometimes I can't. But yeah. many times, um, if I tell the love, the if I tell the uh, resident that their loved one has already paid for this service yes. for them, then or that their loved one wants them to have this done, then they will come into the salon and I'm able to take care of them. Okay. So even when they are having those memory challenges, they do remember that loved one's name and and that motivates them. And even if they don't remember the loved one's name, I think sometimes um, just bringing them maybe to a to a specialist uh, in a salon, maybe even in a in an assisted living community where they're used to handling people with memory issues, that can help 
to mm-hmm. get a workaround for these mm-hmm. people that are really just struggling to get their loved ones to cooperate with basic hygiene. Yes. And if the if the resident is somebody that looking in the mirror doesn't cause them upset, because, you know, sometimes that can cause them upset. But yeah. I can show them in my hand mirror and I can say, look, do you see do you see you have these hairs on your chin? Would you like me to trim them off? Yes. You know, if, if I was just talking to you, then mm-hmm. I could just say, hey, you know, do you want to do a wax your chin today or something? Right, you know, right. And you'd be yeah. okay. But with them, I show it to them and they can see it. And then they're like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, yes, let's do that. Yeah. And that may help them to remember that it's them. I know that I had the lady that I was referring to earlier. She had a full face of facial hair. She did not even recognize herself in the mirror. Mm-mm. She would see herself in the mirror and say, who is that man? Yes. Um, and number one, as we age, if you have cognitive issues, sometimes you remember yourself as being a little child. So that can be scary for them sitting in front of a mirror. But then if if something has happened like that where facial hair is growing, where hair has gotten kind of uncontrollable, they don't recognize themselves in the mirror and it frightens them. So um, I know that in some salons, uh, in some of our communities, they'll have a chair that turns around from the mirror so that they're not frightened by that. They're expecting to see six-year-old them and here we're looking at, you know, 86-year-old them. Yeah, and and they don't know that person. They don't know that person Mm -hmm. at all. So um, that's very interesting. What about skincare? I know that you are... Great, even about skincare. Mm-hmm. So, talk a little bit about skincare as we age. Skincare is actually my favorite. I love. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love skincare. <laughs> it just makes me light up, I guess. But, anyways, um, skincare is something that I think that in general we kind of put it in the background a lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And as we age, the skin gets a lot thinner mm-hmm. um, and it gets a little more difficult to work with because right. of that thinness. But, Other times, you have people that have oily skin when they're young, for example. Uh Oilier skin as you age tends to actually stay thicker, and it's easier to take care of, believe it or not. Bonus for me. Yes. I definitely had some oily skin when I was young. And if you had oily hair when you were young, you know, you'll probably – your hair will probably stay pretty healthy as you get older too. Oh, yay. yes. Because well, as I didn't really have yeah, because as we age, our skin produces less oil. Mm-hmm. So since it produces let, less oil, it dries out really fast. Um, I've seen a lot of seniors where their skin gets very flaky. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they get a buildup of these flakes, just like when they're not brushing their hair, right. they get a buildup of the flakes on their skin. And they can actually get facials done, and we can exfoliate that and and solve that skincare problem. So if they got a facial once a month, just a basic facial, mm-hmm. it would help solve a lot of their skincare problems and okay. keep their skin healthy. Okay. If they can't afford to go see a professional... Um, how do you recommend that they handle that in the home? How could a loved one, it, could you just go and get like a regular mask? Um, how does that work for you, the person in the home? The best thing would be a cleanser. Okay. And then a a facial scrub that has very fine little okay. beads in it, not something like nutshells. So that would be too abrasive. Oh, yeah. Something very, very fine that that will help exfoliate that skin. And then, of course, a moisturizer. Okay, definitely the moisturizer. And if you're nervous about any of these kinds of things, I would recommend talking to a professional. Maybe you need to consult with a dermatologist before you use any kind of abrasive thing on the skin because the skin is so thin mm-hmm. the older that we get. So, yes. um, or come see a professional if you can, you know, if you can afford it. Here in Gainesville, um, Harbor Chase has allowed for you to have a salon there that is open to the public. Yes, it which is. Which is how I am able to go get my hair there. Mm-hmm. But um, any of our seniors could actually book with you. Yes. To come in and get whatever it is that you offer. I know you offer facials. You offer um, complete hair uh, needs. Um, mm, manicures, do, pedicures. Manicures and pedicures. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Waxing. If you, yeah. So, if you have a loved one that is suffering with cognition issues, dementia, or just, you know, has that really delicate skin, you may want to seek out a professional like Laura is um, in one of your local communities. We're fortunate here in Gainesville to have you here. Um, 
and I'll leave links where they can uh, reach out to you here. Um, and then I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, sometimes you've been able to catch um, catch some scarier things going on in the skin. Oh, yes. With your facials. Oh, yes. I'm not allowed to diagnose anything, right. of course, because I'm not a physician. But I've been doing this long enough mm-hmm. that uh, I've recognized skin cancer many, many, many times. I've sent people into the doctor and they've come back at their next appointment and said, you know, you were right. I had to have this removed. Uh, so Easy. yes, yeah. your your cosmetologist can definitely be your friend with. with it can help. It does not take the place of a physician no. in any way, but it does help to keep you know to keep on top of these things yes. with hygiene and use your sunscreen, especially if you know you're working outside. Mm-hmm. Somebody that works outside on a day to day basis, they don't think about it, but the tops of the ears. You know, uh, their yeah, neck, yeah. those things are exposed to sun day after day after day. And you see a lot of skin cancer there on the elderly because of yes, that exposure. Definitely. My grandfather, he was bald for many, many years. And um, he worked outside a lot. And he definitely had numerous times where he had some skin cancer issues on his bald head. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And My even husband. and make sure it's broad spectrum too, because broad spectrum okay. it takes care of burning rays and aging rays. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Yes, I don't. I'm not yes. a skincare specialist. Yes, and at least an SPF 15 is what the textbook recommends. It's actually in the textbook. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. textbook says at least an SPF 15 because it it will cut. Um, it will protect against. I think it's 93 percent of those rays. Okay. Oh, good to know. Yes. So is there anything else that you think that, you know, our listeners really need to hear as far as taking care of our loved ones and meeting those hygiene needs? Yes, definitely. I mean, they've got to have their hair brushed. They've got to try to get their hair brushed every day, even if they don't want to. You know, um, girls, the 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 older women, you know, when we were girls, we used to play dress up. So maybe you can just put it as we're going to play dress up today. And, yeah. you know, we're going to brush your hair and we're going to do this little mini facial and we're going to do this manicure and dress up can help. Yeah. Um, yeah. With men, it might be a little more challenging. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just let them know, hey, this is really relaxing. I have a gentleman that um, he, the the balding head. Yes. And his skin gets very, very dry, and I will put a deep conditioner on his scalp, and oh, I will wrap it okay. in hot towels, uh, and those hot towels will actually help that moisturizer penetrate into his skin, oh, and nice. I massage it in. He loves it. Well, sure. That's a day at the spa. Man. Yes. We so all like that. <laughs> there, there is a way to convince men. Every week, I do his scalp, and he does not like it if I miss it. So okay. I okay. can't miss it, you know. Well, even manicures for men as they're aging, um, they're important because you can get a buildup under the fingernails, and the fingernails start to thicken a little bit. And so... So I've known over the years um, that you have to also pull the men into that and say, hey, today it's manicure day. We're going to do a manicure for men and just let them know, hey, I don't I'm not necessarily going to paint your nails today unless some some guys are into that. But I'm not necessarily going to paint your nails like I would the ladies. But I do want to make sure Mm -hmm. that you're looking handsome, that we're keeping it clean underneath so that we keep that hygiene up. Yes. And I really do try to especially pay attention to the memory care residents and Mm -hmm. the way their nails look because they get dirty underneath and, you know, they don't think to clean them, you know, so. Yeah, they don't. They they, don't. They don't. And um, just yesterday, we'll we'll use this as an example. I had one of the ladies in and I was supposed to give her a manicure because I try to give her a manicure once a month. And she had some polish on and she said, oh, I don't want a manicure. I just had this polish done. And, but I made a point to look underneath her nails and make sure they were clean and to check the edges and see if they needed to be filed. Because if they're reluctant to get the service done, you need to at least check those little things. Um, and you can always file one or two nails that are rough. Right, and right. And they may let you do that when they wouldn't let you do the entire thing. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, and then the feet. Uh, a lot of times the feet are ignored. And um, as we age, some of us will tend to get very thick toenails. So at some point... Um, is there a point when it's better for them to see a podiatrist 
not just come and try to cover it with paint, but to go and see a podiatrist? Definitely. Uh, thick toenails, I just... If they're too thick, I just won't work with them. And what is the line between too thick? If you can't put a nail clipper around them and easily cut them, they're too thick. Okay. A a podiatrist needs to see that. Chances are it's a fungus problem if that's happening. Um, Not always, Mm -hmm. but chances are. You know, our nails get thicker because as we grow older, the nails don't grow evenly. That's why they get those ridges in them too. Oh, okay. They're growing slower. They're growing unevenly. So they end up thicker because the cells are building up. Yeah. Since they're not growing outward, they're growing upward. Right. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. And the same thing with the ridge. It's stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. And that causes ridges. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I've noticed in my years um, that people that are ignoring uh, the pedicure part, um, it really affects them negatively as far as balance goes. Um, it can really hurt them with their shoes, having their shoes on. And um, you think about it, if we don't cut our toenails and you're wearing closed-toed shoes, uh, you're you're potentially jamming that toenail back into your foot, which alters the way that they walk. And a lot of times if they've got Alzheimer's and dementia, they, they're not aware of where they hurt or why they're walking the way that they're no, walking. No, it's just like when you're raising children, your babies can't tell you they need their toenails exactly. clipped. Exactly. So it's yeah. on us as caregivers, as family members, as you, as staff members in a great assisted living community to um, be paying attention to that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, Laura, thank you so much for coming and talking about this. This has been great. And it's not something necessarily that everyone thinks about all the time, but mm-hmm. I feel like it's really important emotionally um, and physically to pay attention to these little things. Yes. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, if I, okay. If I yeah. Have just a moment. Um, collagen and elastin, you know, that's what keeps our skin yes. nice and plump. Well, between our mid-20s and early 30s, that's when it starts to diminish and the production gets slower and slower. And that's why by 40s, our skin right. is sagging. Yeah. Vitamin C will really help you with your collagen production. So you want to take oh. that vitamin C. Hey. C, E, D, and good. K is what will help you with your skin in the aging process. C, D, E, and K. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good to know as I am fast approaching 50 (laughs) because I want want to sag as little as possible. So Yes, I thought thought those that are watching might like to know that too. Hey, we're all aging, um, so it's really helpful to know what we can do to kind of prevent um, issues down the road. So thank you so much for coming, Laura. Um, If you have not subscribed, please take this opportunity to subscribe uh, and like and share, please. This is a tool that we want for everyone to be able to use. Thank you.